Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this very cool aged whiskey barrel cake. I baked up six cake layers in three different sizes, two eight inch, two seven inch, and two six inch with two separate flavors. Each flavor had one layer of each size and I stacked them from largest all the way up to smallest. I picked which flavor was going to be the bottom of the barrel and flipped it upside down. I added a filling thickness layer of buttercream to the top of that cake and then inserted bubble tea straws for support. I measured the straws flush with the top of the frosting layer. I placed a cake board over the top of that and checked it with my level. I carefully placed the top cake over the bottom. At this point I went ahead and put a wooden dowel all the way down through the cake. Because I baked different sizes of cake layers, I didn't actually have to do much carving to get it into a barrel shape. However, if you wanted to use all the same size of cake layers, you could do it that way and just carve it yourself. I don't normally do a crumb coat, but I went ahead and did a crumb coat with white chocolate ganache for this cake. Once the crumb coat set up, I went ahead and added a full layer of white chocolate ganache to the outside. After that, it was just a matter of lots and lots of smoothing. I also built up the ganache here and there to perfect the shape of the barrel as best I could. Once I was satisfied with the overall shape, I used a hot spatula to smooth it even more. I'm telling you, you guys, this is the most important part of the whole cake, trying to get that close to perfect barrel shape as best you can. Next, I rolled out a piece of modeling chocolate about the size of the top circle of the cake, which as you remember was a six inch. I used water to attach it to the top of the cake. Next, I started to roll out long, thin panels of modeling chocolate to use as the wood on the side of the barrel. I used a wood grain texture mat to texture the modeling chocolate. I also created a template by myself, measuring the height of the cake and then adding some curve to the sides, hoping it would fit around the shape of the barrel. You could also measure that out exactly if you know how. I just figured it wouldn't be too hard to trim it down. I used my quilting ruler to mark the middle of the panel and then a Dresden tool to draw a line down the center of the panel. This created the look of two panels where there was only one, thus saving me time. I attached the panel with water. After applying my panels to the cake, I was actually pretty impressed with how they fit considering the fact that I had eyeballed the measurements. I had to do a little trimming here and there, but it wasn't too bad. Also, if you use modeling chocolate like I did, the pieces come together really smoothly anyway. The last section was a really small and odd shaped piece, so I just sort of eyeballed it and attached it to the cake and trimmed it while it was on there. I had planned to keep a small amount of lip at the top of the barrel, but went ahead and decided to cut it off. Next, I used a Dresden tool to emphasize a lot of the detail of the wood. I added some more lines than the ones that were already there and emphasized some of the existing ones. I especially highlighted some of the knots in the wood. 
I spent a decent amount of time on this part as airbrushing comes next and I wanted to make sure the wood looked exactly the way I wanted it to. I also put a little emphasis on the lines in between the panels of the wood. I started my airbrushing with the color ivory. I love to start with the lighter colors and get a really good base. And also to kind of warm myself up to the airbrushing process. Sometimes it can be a little intimidating. I love things like wood grain because you can really be free to be artistic. I really tried to be random with my color, especially on the top of the barrel, and also to emphasize some of the knots and the details in the wood. You definitely want to start light and make passes around the cake because you can always add more color. I went in next with my next darkest brown, which was warm brown, and just started adding it little by little, also emphasizing the knots and things like that. I did cover the top of the cake with a cake board because I wanted it to stay that ivory color. I used this color to make up the majority of the base color of the barrel, although I did try to let some of the ivory shine through here and there. Again, make as many passes around the cake as you need to, but definitely add the color gradually so you can keep editing it as you go. This cake was for my husband's speakeasy prohibition party and because of that I really wanted my barrel to look aged and dirty, so the next color I added was black. I was really pretty random with how I applied the black because I really wanted it to look dirty and stained. Lastly, I decided to go back in with one final coat of the warm brown. When I was finished airbrushing, I rolled out a modeling chocolate and fondant mixture into long thin strips. I used my quilting ruler to measure three quarter of an inch long strips. I did run the strips through my pasta machine, I believe at a level two, because I didn't want them to stick out too far from the cake. These strips were to be the steel bands that wrap around the outside of the barrel. So next I dusted them with, with some black petal dust and also with some silver luster dust to give kind of a rusted steel look. Put some piping gel all around the outside of the cake where I wanted the first band to go and then attached the band.
I knew what pattern I wanted to attach my bands in and I just eyeballed it all the way around the cake. You're welcome to measure if you'd like a little more precise look, but I figured these barrels were supposed to look pretty aged and I trusted my own eyeballing skills. I wanted to add four X's to the front of the cake to look kind of like stamps. So I first scratched them out with a scalpel tool and then painted over my scratch marks with black food coloring mixed with vodka. As I mentioned before, the theme of this party was a speakeasy, so I found some really cool old Prohibition newspaper articles that I printed out on cardstock, cut out, and attached to the cake board. It just added a really cool finishing touch to this cake. I love incorporating cake boards in my design. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the creation of this cake. I feel like the possibilities are endless with the techniques used in this barrel cake. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time.